from MadeEveryday.com. Have you ever thought of making your own towel before? Or rather, semi-homemade towel? Well, today, we are going to make one. I love summertime, I love fun fabrics, and last summer it dawned on me, why not make my own towel with all those cute fabrics? It's kind of like an outdoor blanket for swimming. And besides, who doesn't love a good excuse to use some pom-pom trim? So here's what you need. One and a half yards of terry cloth fabric or a bath towel, one and a half yards of fabric, and two yards of pom-pom trim. This project is basically like making a really simple blanket or like a burp cloth where you take two fabrics, sandwich them together, sew around the edges, and flip it right side out. And you can use a bath towel for your project, which I've done before, but you can also find terry cloth, which is the fabric that towels are made from, in most fabric shops. And what I love about this particular one is that it's very lightweight and won't be too bulky when I combine it together with our fabric. You can make your towel any dimension that you want. Today I'm gonna to cut mine 30 by 54 inches, and I've already cut my terry cloth to those dimensions. So I'm gonna set that aside for just a moment. I'm gonna pull out my fabric here, and oh, I love this print. It is so cheerful, happy, summery. It's adorable. Okay, so spread that out so everything is nice and smooth. And then I'm gonna place our terry cloth right on top. And the thing about terry cloth is that you will get little pieces of the fabric all over you, all over your room, but it's so worth it and resist the urge to clean it up until you're all done. Okay, just kind of smooth it all out so you don't have any big bubbles there. Okay, and then if you are a quilter, you're familiar with this step, I'm gonna take some safety pins and I just want to attach the two layers together so that it stays together while I'm sewing. There's no specifics on this, just, I don't know, 10 safety pins. Just attach enough that it's staying together. And I'm not going to put any right at the edges because that's where we're going to attach our pom-pom trim. And you could make your trim go all the way around the entire towel. That would be adorable too. I'm just gonna do mine at the very ends, but you know, do what you're feeling. And there's so many cute trims out there. You can find the pom-pom trim in so many colors. You could get cute tassel trim or fringe. Okay, now I'm going to cut out my fabric. And as you can tell, I have the two with right sides together. If you're having a hard time cutting straight lines on a large cut of fabric like this, it really helps sometimes to place it on your floor. If you have tile or if you have wood floors, sometimes those grout lines can help you find long straight lines to guide you in your cutting. And you can also watch my video where I show tips for cutting straight and curved lines. That might help you too. Okay, we have both of our pieces sandwiched together. Now let's grab our pom-pom trim. There are many different sizes and quality of pom-pom trim that you can find at the store and online. This is the kind that I used for these towels here that I showed you. And it's really cute and small, but I did find that because these aren't quite as secure on these threads here, that over time when I washed this towel, a few of the pom-poms came off. So. I prefer one that has a little bit thicker of an attachment here, and you can find this in so many colors. I love this orange. There's yellow, there's pink, there's coral, turquoise. I mean, I almost can't stop myself from buying every color. So that's adorable. And today, we're going to use this even bigger pom-pom, which I think is gonna look awesome. So, set these aside, and let's attach our trim. Now we're gonna peel back this fabric that we sandwiched together. And the reason I like to keep the layers together before attaching the pom-pom trim is that it helps ensure that your two pieces are cut the exact same size. Because once you have a three-dimensional trim in the end, it might be hard to cut them precisely. Okay, so we're going to attach it first to the fabric piece. And I know you might be thinking, 
place it in there, sandwich it, go for it, which is totally what I'm always thinking. But it really helps to do this preparatory step to do a basting stitch to one side first and then sew them both together. So place it on here. I'm gonna let it overhang just a little bit and I'm just matching it up with the edge of my fabric here. Like that. And then I'm gonna pin it in place. I mean, it already looks cute seeing it next to this happy daisy fabric. Okay, just pin that down. We're gonna pin it on the other end too. And then we're gonna go to our sewing machine. Okay, and then just cut off a little bit of the tail here. Okay, let's go to our sewing machine. I'm just gonna sew right down the middle of this trim here. Again, this is just a basting stitch, which is something to hold it in place until a later step. So if your trim was a little bit thinner, just sew to the edge, something to hold it in place. Do a back stitch at the beginning. Okay, I've sewn both of my trims on the two ends. Now we're gonna sandwich the two layers together. Spread your towel back out, and now we're going to sandwich the trim and pin it in place in between those two layers. So make sure that they're all tucked in. You want your trim sewn into the towels so that when you're done, they fold out and they are sewn inside that seam. Okay. Now, like I was saying, because this is three-dimensional, you sort of have to pull the towel piece over a little bit. And we cut our dimensions perfectly the same for both layers, so you can trust yourself to just match it up like that. And pin it in place all the way down for both ends. As you're pulling these two layers together, be careful with the terry cloth not to stretch it. It's not a stretchy fabric, but it does have some give to it. So just try to work carefully so that everything matches up and lines up with your cotton fabric underneath. Okay, pin the other side also. I'm done pinning both of the ends here. Let's go back to our sewing machine. Now before we sew these two layers together, I am going to change the presser foot on my machine to my zipper foot. And if you don't have one, that is fine. Just use your standard foot and we'll make it work. Because what we want to do, I open this up for you, I'll take this pin out, is that we want to sew past this large wide attachment piece so that when we're done, all we see are the little pom-pom sticking out. And you don't have to do it that way. You might prefer to have this trim piece showing. I've seen that on projects before too, and that looks great. You could just sew it right to the outside and have this cute band of white fabric there. So the thing that's great about my zipper foot is that I can get it really close to the edge here without it bumping into these pom-poms so that I can sew past this trim. If you're using your standard foot, just get your needle all the way over to the left and get as close as you can to the edge. On my baby lock, this pops off in the back. And then I take this foot and pop it right on. And you can see how this edge is a lot smaller. I can even shift my needle over if I want to, to get really close to the edge there. Now, as you can see, I can't really see where the edge of that trim is right there, but I can feel it with my finger. So as I sew, I'm gonna try to sew past where the edge of that trim is. Just keep using your left hand to make sure all the pom-poms are not in the way. Okay, I made it to the end, cut my threads there. And then I wanna do a little quality inspection here just to make sure I sewed past that little trim edge. And if there's any places where I didn't, I can just go back and fix those. Oh, there's one right there. Well, actually, oh yeah, just a tiny bit. That's not too bad, I might just leave that. But, oh, there's a spot. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna sew that real quick. 
Okay, let's see how it looks. Everything's looking good. Everything's looking cute. Okay, I think we're ready to sew the other side. Okay, I'm at the end. I'm gonna cut my threads. I love this cutting feature on my baby lock. Okay, now we're gonna go and pin together the long sides of our towel. Now let's trim off some of the bulk off of the end of these seams that we just sewed. That will make it a little less bulky inside when we turn it right side out. And if there's any extra trim hanging out of the corners, I'm gonna cut this pom-pom off because it might get stuck in the other side. Trim that off. And let's cut these two off also. Okay, trim down the other side. I'm so glad that we have these safety pins holding everything together. It just makes it so much easier. Okay, let's trim off these. All right. Now let's give that guy a trim too. Okay, now we're gonna work on the long sides. We're gonna pin those together. And one thing that we're gonna add into one of the sides is a little piece of trim like this. You can use bias tape, you can use cotton twill tape, you could use ribbon because then you have something that you can hang your towel on a hook, which I think is a little fun addition. So I have a piece of cotton twill tape right here. Cut it about five or six inches long. And let's open this up. I'm just gonna find the middle point. I am eyeballing it. You could fold it in half and see. And we're gonna stick that right in between the two layers. Make sure it's not twisted. And that looks a little bit long. I'm gonna trim that a little. You can even have it hanging out a little bit just to ensure that it's sewn in there really nicely. Lay those back together and then pin that in place. Okay, and then just pin down both sides. Okay, now one last thing we need to do is leave an opening here so that we can turn the whole thing right side out when we're done. So I'm gonna leave it in the middle of the side, not the side that has the little hang piece. So about 10 inches wide, and I'm gonna use double pins here. That's kind of my method to remind myself to not sew. So then we're gonna sew down this side, pause, down the other side, and then this whole way here. So let's go to our machine. I'm gonna switch back to my standard presser foot instead of my zipper foot for this step because in general, your standard foot has a larger surface area and works better for pressing down on your fabric. Okay, come to your machine and make sure that this last pom-pom is not in the way of your seam allowance. And I'm using about a 3 8 inch, half inch seam allowance. There's no right or wrong here. As I get to these double pins, I'm gonna stop and do a back stitch. Cut my threads. and then move down to the next double pin so that I'm leaving this opening gap here. Okay, now let's do the other side. Okay, let's turn this whole thing right side out and finish it off. Okay, I'm just removing the safety pins here so that we can turn this whole thing right side out and see how it looks. Find our opening, there it is. And, you know, this terry cloth has been pretty good. It hasn't been as messy as other ones I've worked with. Oh my goodness, you guys, this is so fun. I love a cherry print. Okay, pull those corners out or get your hand inside and push it out. I might need to do that. Right there. 
There we go, nice. And let's see how our little hang, hang tag, hang, <laughs> our little hanging piece looks. That looks awesome. That'll work great. You know, I think this would be an adorable look for a bathroom also. There's lots of cute towels out there, don't get me wrong. But if you want something really unique and special and exact to what you want, this is a fun idea. Okay, one more corner. There we go. Okay, now we want to close up this gap here. So we're gonna pin that closed first. Fold these edges in and they should just naturally want to go in because they're part of the seam here. And pin it closed. And then you could just sew the opening closed and be done. But I kind of like to do a top stitch around the entire thing. Pull all these layers out, make sure that it's nice and smooth. There we go. As I sew this closed, I like to sew all the way around, sewing that in place, and it just kind of polishes it off. And then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and pin this now. I like to sew two lines that kind of cut this into thirds that again, holds it together, sort of like quilting. If you've made a quilt before and you do the quilting stitching at the end, you don't wanna sew too many lines or it starts to be kind of stiff. So I am just going to eyeball it. Maybe I'll grab a ruler here. If you have a print that has a really directional design, it's easier to see where a line, a natural line would be. But I'm just going to sort of, you could draw a line with a fabric marker or something I like to do sometimes is just place pins along like this. And then I know as I'm sewing to just keep sewing from pin to pin like that. That's just my method. You can use the method that makes sense in your brain. Okay, so there's one there. And again, if you've watched my burp cloth video, this is the exact same way that I do those. Let's see, that's about a third. I'm trying to smooth this all out so there's no bubbly spots. Let's place that right there. I made one of these last summer for my daughter and I have to say, it's kind of the go-to towel that she always wants to use. And I think this would be so fun to make as birthday gifts for her friends. I'm always wondering what new thing we could make for the friends. So this might be it. Okay, we're gonna go back to our machine. First, we're gonna sew all the way around the edges and then we're gonna sew these two straight lines and then we're done. I'm gonna sew with about a quarter inch seam allowance right around the whole thing. When you get to the corner here, go slowly, because it might be a little thick there. Leave your needle down, turn and pivot like that. I made it back to the beginning here. Cut your threads. And now we're gonna sew those two side, or center. <laughs> we're gonna sew those two lines that cut it in thirds. <sighs> okay, I'm just following along these pins here. Like I said, I'm eyeballing it down to the next part. There's my next pin. I know that I'm gonna sew right in between that. Okay, we 
we are all done. Let's see how it looks. Okay, just cut off any little loose threads here. Do one more inspection, make sure everything looks great. Oh my goodness, you guys, I love this towel. The pom-pom trim is the perfect proportion to the fabric. The weight is really nice. The size of the whole towel is great. I am definitely gonna be making more of these for summer. I hope you make some too. For more ideas and tutorials, you can check out my website, madeeveryday.com. And for all of your sewing machine needs, go to babylock.com where it's all for the love of sewing. I'll see you next time. Bye.